Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and today is the start of a new series called DIY FYI. Basically, in each episode, I'll be showcasing a quick tip that I've picked up that I want to share with everyone. And this will range from little components to use in projects like today's video, or software tips and fixes, big pieces of tech news, things like that. This is replacing the weekly Prime Things series that I had previously. I think that this approach of cherry picking small bits of content will be more effective than trying to pack a weekly episode with vital information for your everyday life. So now that that's out of the way, let's jump right into the inaugural episode's topic, piezos. First, what is a piezo? Well, it's technically a prefix from Greek, which means to squeeze or press. So in electronics, the full name is a piezoelectric sensor, which means a sensor that converts squeezes, presses, and other parameters into electrical charges. Piezos are very common in DIY electronics projects, especially Arduino-based projects, because they're cheap, have multiple parameters that they can measure, and they're easy to hook up to a breadboard for prototyping, and eventually permanently on a circuit board. Piezos traditionally have two connections, negative and positive, with negative going to ground and positive acting as the data input. One mega ohm resistor is used in the circuit, running across both ground and positive. A test sketch is available on the Arduino platform called Knock, which I'll link to on the Arduino community page, as it also includes a diagram of the circuit. Piezos can be used as either an analog or digital input too because of its ability to measure the strength of its inputs, analog, or as a simple on-off sensor, digital, which adds to their appeal. The most common piezo is the ceramic disc piezo, which I've used with varying success over the years. They're common to use in MIDI instrument projects, which is what I've tried to do in the past, but I've had issues with them consistently sending input data. So because of my experiences with the traditional ceramic discs, I've always been on the lookout for other components that could work in the same way. And I recently had some luck. I randomly found a horizontal vibration piezo at SparkFun, which has mounts to go directly into a breadboard or on a PCB for a final project. It looked a lot sturdier than the ceramic discs, and after running some test code, I'm happy to report that I like them a lot better than the ceramic disc piezos. Feels a lot sturdier, and not questioning whether or not data has been sent or received. I actually modified some test code from SparkFun that displays input data in the serial monitor while also having an LED light up whenever data is received. Now technically, the Arduino Knock example sketch also does this, but I've always had a hard time having it read multiple inputs consistently. It seems to be better streamlined for a single input to test that data is being transmitted, so if you want to test with multiple consistent inputs, then I wouldn't recommend the Knock sketch. If anyone's had a similar experience with that sketch, or more successful results with it, please let me know because I've always wondered if it's truly streamlined for a single input test or if I'm doing something wrong. So I'm pretty excited about this new type of piezo, though I'm definitely planning to use them in the future, maybe in a MIDI-based project. SparkFun also has a vertical version of this as well as larger versions, and I think they're easier to prototype with and will also make a more streamlined and stable finalized project as well. And with that, that ends this episode of DIY FYI. If you like it, toss me a like below, leave any questions, comments, concerns too. Find Blitz City on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram for all the behind the scenes nonsense. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.